Hello and welcome to the seventh video in the series making a beginner application you, uh, using Vue.js and Vuetify. So in this video I actually want to get started with the application proper. So I've got it up in front of us here where we're aiming to get and what I'd like to do is I'd like to, in this video to create this selection list here where we can select one of the countries that will then later on fill this table that we see below and it's this list I'd like to get done in this video. We won't do it with the same styling as we see here, we'll concentrate all that later on but this is the actual basic list up and working is what we're going to aim to do and it's relatively simple using, uh, using Vuetify. I've still got the application as we had before at the end of the last video where we're loading this um, APA from JSON placeholder typical.com posts and now I want to load a different API. I want to load an API that contains all the information that I need for my application to work. Now the way I've done that is I've actually created that and saved it into a static JSON and you can see that in here in my project as well as the scripts folder I've got a data folder which you can download then with data.json inside. And let's just take a very quick look, uh, look, look at that. I've just clicked on open to uh, data.json here. I'm going to copy that JSON data and I'm going to go to jsoneditoronline.org and just paste that in the left hand side here. Click this arrow and what this does is actually show the hierarchy of the keys and things that are inside my object. So whereas when we went to jsonplaceholder.typico.com what we got back as our data if you remember was actually just a pure list of a hundred items. What we've got now is an object and that object contains three keys, top tens, top 20 list and nations and under the key nations you'll see that we have a list of 20 items, it says here, an array containing 20 items and if I look under there you'll see I've got the countries that I want to appear in my selection list. So the first thing we want to do is change our code to actually load our data.json so I'm just going to say directly load from the, the folder data uh, for such data.json and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this data loaded because I don't want it. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this console log here and just put that below this here and I'm going to log just my this.api data instead of the whole response so we don't have too much loaded on the screen. I'll still leave the error one as it is here. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to load our data.json. The other thing I want to do before refreshing the page is I want to delete all of the alerts that were inside um, our application that were appearing when we load our API. I don't want that anymore and I'm going to leave the button as it is. So if we go back to our site now what we should get with good luck and a following wind is I should be able to click on load data and we'll actually have our new API loaded. So I click on load data and you can see now that under API data we have an object and then that object we have our keys and on the right hand side here we can see a bit easier in the console that this API data has an, uh, is an object with nations as a key, top 20 is list, top 10s and nations is an array of 20 things and that's the list we want inside our select. So it's pretty good, pretty straightforward. We've loaded our data.json. We know where our information is. Now what we need to do is put our select on the page. And there are a the couple of tricky things that can happen which I want to show you. But I'm on viewtifyjs.com uh, forward slash components forward slash selects. Um, and what I'm going to do is open the source code here and hit take this first vselect that we've got here. The vselect is the actual uh, markup for the selection list. I'm going to copy that code and just go into my code here and then below the button here drop that select in, tab this stuff along to make it look a little bit neater. And now what I'm going to do is actually refresh the page and have a look at what we've got just pasting the code in purely as it was there. And the first thing you'll see is that we've got uh, property or method items is not defined on the instance but referenced during render and property or method E1 is not defined on the instance but referenced during render. Make sure this property is reactive, blah, 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 blah. So what's gone on there? Why have we got some red text? We have got a select, we've got nothing inside it, we've got select there, but why have we got some red text? Well, the reason is for to know, for view to know, or, or view to find in this case, to know what it should display in the list of items when we to, to be able to select. So when we click the dot, drop down box, in our case the countries, it has to bind to something using vbind. And we have to say here, well what we are saying here is please bind yourself to a list that's called items. So it looks for items inside data here, also a computer property, doesn't find it, so therefore we get an error. The second one is this vmodel. When we select something we store whatever we've selected inside 
whatever's inside the model. Again, we don't have any one defined anywhere, so it doesn't know where to store whatever we select. Therefore, we get a couple of errors. So let's fix that. The first one that we can fix is with the API data. Now, I'm going to say here API data, but I need to say API data dot nations, because you remember if I go back to JSON editor, this object here can be seen as our API data, but it's actually under the nations key that I've got my list. So I'm going to say API data dot nations will then give me the list of nations for me to be able to display inside my select. So that sorts one of our problems out. So if I just go back to the site now and refresh, now we don't even get the button displayed and things are crashing even more. And the reason things are crashing is, is that when our program first loads, API data is actually undefined. So we're telling it to bind something that is actually declared as undefined. Therefore, it's not even able to render our page. It crashes right at the start of uh, loading up. So what I'm actually going to do, if you remember I talked about the vshow and the vif, I'm actually going to put a vif on here. And I want to render this vselect only if API data is defined, or in other words, API data uh, there uh, exists. So I'm just going to put a vif API data on here so that we don't get our page completely crashing at program startup. And this is one of the things that causes you frustration when you first start using APIs and things. So now if I refresh, we get our button on the page and now I click load data. And now I get my select with my countries inside bound to my list. I still, however, get some red text and I get some red text because this E1 still hasn't been dealt with. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to replace this A1 with selected uh, country. And I still need this to exist somewhere. So I'm inside my uh, data object here. I'm going to do selected country. And again, I'm going to call this undefined because it's not. I don't, there's nothing stored in it at the start. Go back into index.html. So I go back to the site, do a refresh. And now it says an unexpected token. And I know instantly what I've done there. I always do this. That should be a comma here. Go back to the site, refresh. Okay, and now when I load up, I haven't got any more red text anymore. Um, and now I can select a country, say Germany here, and scroll down in my API data, and all the way at the bottom, I can see that the selected country is now called Germany. If I go back up to the top here and select France, and then go back down to the bottom here, you can see now that selected country has now changed to France. So it's really as simple as that actually. That's all we need to do to be able to have a selection list uh, up and uh, uh, up and ready to go on our site. The other thing is this select um, sort of placeholder text here. We can make a change to that. That's this text here in the label. So let's just call this a select nation even though we've called the, uh, the variable here in the data object select country. But interchangeable for this this series I guess. If I refresh now hit load data you see we've got select nation there and then still works as it did before. Um, the only real thing that you've got to keep kind of track of with this especially with online APIs is it's really useful with the vif um, to be able to only render when you know that your data is loaded. Another way around it, but it's really not as nice, would be to have actually predefined this as a list or something. Then the select box would have rendered. We've still got some red text. Um, but really the cleanest way to do these things is actually to have it only rendering and being um, shown then when API data exists. Because when you're, although here we're waiting for the button click to load our API, even if we loaded straight away when the program starts, there's still a small delay and the, the browser will still try to render the select before this HTTP request is returned. Therefore, we still get some problems. So in this case, it's really helpful to have the VF saying, please only render this vselect if our API data has actually uh, become undefined, uh, become defined, sorry, it's no longer undefined. So that's it then for this video. Hopefully it's made some sense. I'm sorry about there's a, there's a nasty edit uh, in the middle, unfortunately, because my computer crashed. Um, but hopefully uh, everything made some sense. If it didn't, then pop me a comment. Otherwise, see you in the next one.